everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13 developer beta 7 and public beta 6 have been out for a few days now. And I want to talk about how it's been for me on my devices here, my iPhone 10s max, my 10 R my SE and my iPad pro 12.9. And then also talk about how it's been for you in the YouTube community poll that I ran almost 10,000 people responded. And so we have a pretty good idea how it is on all devices, including ones that are not listed here. So, the first thing is I was looking back at iOS 12 betas and it looks like there were 12 betas and then a GM or golden master. When it comes to iOS 13, we're on beta seven for the developer beta and developer beta 12 from iOS 12 was actually on August 31st. And then a couple of weeks later, they released the GM. So we're basically around that same timeline, although we don't have as many betas yet. So there definitely could be a lot more and we're on a weekly schedule. So I would expect one every week at this point. Now, a couple of things to note is with iOS 13, it now takes advantage of that faster app launching and smaller Ram footprint and smaller size. But to take advantage of that so far, you actually have to uninstall an app and then reinstall it. So you'll have to uninstall whatever app you're using, reinstall that app, and then it will take advantage of that. This may be fixed in the future when iOS 13 comes out. And if your developer takes advantage of that, it probably will just do it on its own at some point in the background. But right now that's how you take advantage of it. Now, another thing is there's some new watches coming out. It looks like a series five Apple watch. That's going to be ceramic or titanium. So I'm looking forward to that and that should be nice. We'll see that probably announced when the iPhones are announced uh, with the iOS 13 and iPhone 11's announcement. So look for that around September 10th or somewhere around that point. Now, as far as the issues I'm experiencing with iOS 13 beta seven, it's been very good for me, except for one thing. And there are some little cosmetic bugs. That's mainly the, the thing that you'll see with iOS 13 beta seven. But the one thing I have issues with is LTE specifically in apps like Instagram, YouTube, all sorts of things. If I drop off of Wi-Fi and then go into another app. Oftentimes it can't load because it thinks there's no internet connection in order to fix that. Every single time I have to turn on airplane mode and then turn it back off, make sure Wi-Fi is off and then it works. It's a big pain. And usually I have to actually close the app in the background, swipe it off and then it will work. So it's really a big pain and hopefully they fix this in the next update because it's something that's very annoying, at least on the 10 S max. I know a lot of you have said you had the same issues. Now, many of you were asking me, can I get Apple card if I have iOS 13 and absolutely you can, you'll see, I have it here. I actually signed up with it with beta six it works fine. So you definitely can get it if you have iOS 13. So don't worry about that. Don't downgrade. If you're wanting to get the, the card, if it hasn't shown up for you, just make sure you sign up on Apple's website to be notified when it's available. Now there's a bunch of little cosmetic bugs all over the place. Things like typing in Instagram. A lot of the times the last row doesn't show while you're typing. So you don't really know what you're typing. I found this when I was posting Instagram pictures of the iPhones and things when they were updating to this latest beta. And then also the last line in Twitter doesn't show You'll find these weird bugs all over the place. Some people are having all sorts of little cosmetic bugs like this one. If you 3d press or haptic press right here, Oftentimes, well, now it's not doing it. Let's see if I can get it to happen on this particular one. So we'll try on the 10 R. Well, let's try here. And normally it would hop up and then back down. So right now it's not doing it, but sometimes it does. Now, other people were asking me, does haptic touch or 3d touch work for notifications? And it does. So if I tap on this one here, you'll see there's peak and pop on notifications, even on an iPhone 10 R. So seems to be working well for me here. Now on an SE, you're not going to see that same thing. The peak and pop feature is not there. If you press and hold it's on the haptic and 3d touch devices. So, and the iPads many times as well. So it's kind of a pain with that. I haven't had any issues with touch responsiveness or anything like that. So thankfully a couple people have, but I haven't had any issues whatsoever. And this is by far the most stable and fastest beta that I've actually had so far. So many people are having different experiences, but for me, it's been by far the best. Everything's working well, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, other than that LTE bug that I mentioned, everything seems to be working really, really well. So thankfully I have no issues there. Now, many people are saying that three finger touch bug is still happening. And if I tap here, it doesn't show up, but if I tap and hold, you'll see it shows up. 
So that causes a problem in games for people. Hopefully they fix that in future updates. I didn't catch that because I didn't hold my fingers down originally. Normally it was just a tap. Now you have to hold and, and press or hold, and it's kind of annoying. Now as far as battery life, battery life for me, while I don't really count it too important on betas because they're focused more on fixing bugs, battery life overall is okay. My battery health on this device is 100%, and on my battery life here, here's my best day, 5 hours and 47 minutes, 1 hour and 13 minutes of screen off time. I would say... On average, I haven't been using it a lot lately. I use my iPad an awful lot in between, but you'll see there's a lot of background activity. Overall, I say six and a half hours is pretty average from what I'm hearing with an iPhone XS Max. It may be a little bit better on an iPhone XR, and the majority of people are having really good battery life. That's not true for everyone, but the majority of people are. If you're running apps like Facebook, and you don't disable background app refresh and all of the different things that it wants to turn on, you're not going to have good battery life. So make sure you turn all of that off. Now, as far as people having issues, I heard of two people that had major issues when they first installed this. It was rebooting their phone on the XS Max and the iPhone XS. It was rebooting their phone. Their phone was getting really hot. It was giving them overheat messages, even though when it cooled down, it was still cool to the touch. It was, it was doing all sorts of weird things and rebooting. And then after a few hours, it stabilized and it's been pretty fine ever since. So there's definitely some weird things going on. Hopefully not too many people experience that. I've only heard of two people with those similar issues and they've since subsided. Now, some other issues that people have been saying is other than those cosmetic issues I mentioned with Instagram and Twitter, other people are having issues with with the actual dictation not working properly. So dictation seems to work fine for me, but if you have multiple keyboards, it may not work properly. That seems to be where it's an issue. So if you're using voice dictation, it could be an issue. And also some people are still having issues with touch, specifically on the iPad. Thankfully, I've not had this issue. It seems to be quite responsive for me most of the time. And I've not had any issues with this beta so far. And this is actually a device I use quite a lot. So I've had no touch responsive issues and thankfully it's working properly for me. It may not be on all devices. It's going to be different depending on which ones you're using. Now let's take a look at the YouTube community poll. The YouTube community poll, almost 10,000 voted 9.8 K. So I really appreciate that. It gives us a great idea and a great subset of data to figure out how many people are having issues or how it's doing for people. 40% said it's great. Now take a look at the others up here on the top so you can see how the previous betas have been for people. It's been pretty good overall. 40% said great. 3% said terrible. 14% said okay, but some bugs. 32% said I use iOS 12.4 or older. And 11% said I use Android. So pretty good overall. I think it's it's about on par with the previous version. So it's getting better. And there's people like this here that said a day ago, using an iPhone SE, not a single problem. Battery life is great and everything is smooth and fast. But then you'll see other people that, that have major issues. So if we take a look at, and there's one here that says, does it work with iPhone 5S? Unfortunately, 5S, 6 and 6 Plus are no longer supported. So no, you'll have to get a new phone, unfortunately. You'll see someone here says, iPhone SE great overall, but battery life still needs some improvement. Incorrect or missing translations have been resolved. There's quite a few people saying that battery life is great, and then you'll have quite a few people saying it's terrible. Is it stable enough to install on my daily driver? I tend to tell people that if you have to ask that question, you probably shouldn't run it until the final version comes out because if any little bug happens, uh, you'll want to probably not use it. So I normally say don't install it if you ask that question. Otherwise, why not? Everything is great except the battery, although I don't know what device that is. And then you'll see another person. Battery life is really bad on beta 7 on iPhone 7. You'll see others. If you read through these comments, which you can, uh, there's over 200 of them. So I've read every single one of them. But if you read through all of them, you'll see that some people have great battery life and some don't. It's kind of interesting. It's getting better, but I still have some bugs. I'm a totally blind iPhone 8 user and I 100% rely on voiceover. And voiceover still randomly freezes up on me sometimes, which gets annoying because then I can't access my phone for a couple minutes until it starts acting right again. But other than that, it's been great. And thank you for watching or listening to this video. Hopefully they get that fixed. 
I think voiceover is a really great feature and hopefully it's spot on the day it releases for all of our disabled users or anyone that wants to use it. Been pretty great, still a few bugs with third party apps, but much less in beta five. 3D touch while not the same on iOS 12 is fast on iOS 12, fast as iOS 12, but doesn't have the same feel. And that's definitely true. It's super fast now, but it, it's more of a haptic feedback feel the animation is different, but in many areas, it's still pressure sensitive. Here's someone that said, my iPhone restarts randomly. Anyone else have this problem? iPhone XS Max did a restore on my phone, but it didn't fix it. Like I said before, give it a few hours. Hopefully it gets a little bit better. It's been all right on my iPhone XS Max, still needs work. Still that bug where I can't send videos to people with Android devices. Uh, I haven't heard too many people with that issue, but there are definitely a few. Using the beta on my iPhone 10 and iPad Pro 10.5, updated from iOS 12.4 on both, and the only problem I noticed so far is that photos crashes instantaneously when you tap when you tap on the status bar to get to the top of the pictures in albums. Same thing happens when you're at the top on albums to get to the bottom. I actually tried this out and I wasn't able to reproduce it. So I'm not sure if it's both devices you're saying it, but I wasn't able to reproduce it on my 10s max. Anyway, this beta is running very well running this on iPhone 10 and face ID and speed are spectacular on my iPhone eight plus really smooth. Can't believe we're in the seventh beta already. Battery could be better. Loving the super fast 3d touch. Love your videos and a huge fan. Thanks very much. Appreciate that. Some weird bugs in Control Center, iPhone SE, public beta 6. Now, before we go on, there's a few people that are saying there's issues with all these third-party apps, and that's probably true. They have to update them for the use of iOS 13. Apple always changes the backend APIs, and in order for them to take advantage and run properly on an iOS 13 device, they need to update their apps as well. So when iOS 13 releases to the public in September, expect a ton of app updates. If you haven't been through the betas before, you'll probably have 30 to 100 app updates that day or the next few days. Auto brightness not working properly with iPhone with 9.7 inch iPad 6th gen. It's been pretty good on my iPhone 6s. Battery life is good. 100% capacity, five to six hours of usage on a single charge before I have to charge again. I'm also a light user, so that may be why. iPhone 10 Genius app still constantly reloads whenever I jump back to it. On Instagram, text doesn't jump to the next line when typing and goes off screen. Flawless otherwise. So happy that 3D touch is fast again iPhone 10R, no bugs like before. Mail, message, dynamic wallpapers working fine now. Well polished beta OS. Battery life is pretty good. I forgot to actually mention mail. Mail is working much, much better for me than it was before. However, it's still a little bit buggy. Sometimes I have to close the app and reopen it. So it's hopefully they get that fixed soon. Apple uses the same app, so I'm sure they're seeing the same thing. Been using iPhone 7 and everything is really fast. Battery life is amazing and a single issue hasn't come up for me once public beta 6. Working quite well on my 10s. Banking apps still crash. That's again because those apps need to update. I have similar issues some on some specific apps. And then you'll see great on 10R. So thanks to all of you who commented and voted. I really appreciate it. And if you're having issues, make sure you use that feedback app and, and report those. That's how Apple categorizes what they need to fix next. So hopefully that helps. If you have any other questions or comments, let me know in the comments below. And if there's anything else you found, I would love to hear what you found in iOS 13 beta seven. Let me know in the comments below as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. There's also a version for the iPad as well. That's full screen in high resolution. So I'll link both of those. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you'd like to see more of these videos as soon as they're released, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.